Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science, and today I'm going to show you how to make your own balms at home. Balms are perhaps one of the simplest products you can create at home, and it's a great way of starting out and experimenting in making your own personal care products. Balms are 100% lipid based, so when made correctly and capped carefully, you won't need to worry about things like preservatives or pH adjustments. You can also add various essential oils and oil based extracts to your balm to make them more unique, as well as careful selection of the oils you want to include to provide different moisturisation and marketing story factors. Balms are completely lipid based, so if you're using natural vegetable oils, you'll need to make sure you use antioxidant. There are a couple of antioxidants you can choose from. We have a couple of favourites that you could use, such as rosemary antioxidant or tocopherol vitamin E. You'll need to pack your balms off while they're still liquid, so you need to make sure you have an area and suitable equipment to make sure you're pouring off hot liquid safely. And of course you're going to need wax to help set your balm into its required consistency. Now different balms have different consistency requirements, so you're the best one to decide exactly what sort of consistency you're trying to achieve. There are various waxes you can use. Beeswax is very popular. It's also quite a flexible wax, which means your balm could be pressed or dipped into relatively easily. You can also use candelilla or carnauba wax for more gloss effects, particularly if they're to be used on the lips. But just beware, they're best combined with beeswax so you have a bit of flexibility in your product. For softer balms, you'd want to use around 12 to 17% of combined waxes, while for hard sticks, you'd want to use 17% or more, even up to around 22% of hard waxes to set them into a stick consistency. Beware, don't be confused into thinking that you can adjust the viscosity of your balm consistently using soft butters. Products like coconut oil, cocoa butter and shea butter, as well as other exotic butters, actually have quite a low melting point. Never use these above 10% in your balm formula, otherwise what can sit into a nice balm-like consistency in cooler climates will turn to liquid quite readily when the temperatures get higher. You are best to use waxes that have a high melting point to adjust the consistency of your balm and keep any input of butters or low melting point butters to 10% or less. Now let's get started in the lab and I'll show you how to put a balm together. So here I have my lipids measured out. So I've got my castor oil, I've got some shea butter, I've got some candelilla wax so that I can get some nice gloss off of this product and I've also got my beeswax. I've now got this heating and I'll heat this until it melts. Over here I have pre-prepared uh, tocopherol and sweet orange oil so that once this, uh, this phase here has melted sufficiently and blended I can then uh, add the essential oil and antioxidant and then I can stir it through and then I can pack it off into these containers which I have ready as well. This way it minimizes the exposure of the essential oil to the heat uh, and of course I've got antioxidant in there to help protect the product um, from going rancid over time. The use of castor oil means that it will have a good relative oxidative stability but we are talking about natural lipids here and they do have the potential to go rancid over time. So if we wanted to get a really good shelf life out of this product we do need to add antioxidant so that we can achieve that really good shelf life and protection from rancidity.
Now we leave them to set. Do not cap off your balm until it is fully cool or at least at room temperature, otherwise you'll get condensation forming on the lid on the inside and that will turn into water droplets which could then cause a contamination issue on top of the balm. Uh, if you don't have that then because your balm is all oil you won't have any contamination issues. And here we have the finished balm. So it's set nice and hard and you can see it's quite shiny, quite a bit of gloss to it and that is from the candelilla but also still quite, it's still got a bit of flexibility in it and that comes from using the beeswax. So I've got a nice solid balm there you can see nice and glossy on the skin and of course with the orange oil in there a nice taste to the lips as well. I hope you enjoyed this introduction to formulating your own balms. Don't forget to watch our other videos where we'll take you through how to create emulsions and foaming products as well. And of course if you'd like to learn more visit our website and contact us for a full prospectus of our course offerings. Happy formulating!